You're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. This is Robin Monteith with the Sage Ridge School, an extraordinary part of our community. Thank you so much for having us today. Oh my gosh, we're so happy to have you here. I'd love it if you'd start with a little bit about Sage Ridge, where it got its start, and what it's here to do. We're nestled in the foothills of Southwest Reno. We are an independent nonprofit school with about 235 kids here, split between our elementary school and our high school, so serving grades four through 12. We are college prep, we have a rigorous curriculum, but we really believe in educating the whole child. So we have classes in arts, PE, the whole, the whole gamut, and we just are so thrilled to be a part of this community and doing the work that we do here. You're one of the top performing schools in the nation. How do you achieve that? Well, in addition to our advanced curriculum, we have small class sizes. Each student, from the very moment that they're coming to our school, is assigned a specific advisor that develops a close relationship so that they're monitoring that student throughout their experience. Once the kids get into high school, we have a full-time college counselor who is working with each student to not just find the best college, but the best fit for that student. So we're really, from the very moment they set foot on campus, we're setting them up for success. These are our last four graduating classes. Here's our last year's class, 2016. 28 kids offered 5.1 million in scholarships and awards and 134 college acceptances. It's pretty exciting stuff and a great group of kids. So, and they went everywhere from UNR to Stanford to NYU to UPenn. We just really try and find the best fit for the student. One of the reasons for the massive success in this school is your pillars. And when you think of a pillar, we think of the structural support for everything. And you really take this seriously. We do, we do. The core pillars, these five pillars, are essentially our core values. And they drive everything that we do and how we do it. So integrity, um, the kids are expected to be honest and authentic with each other. If a child loses his phone, that phone will be returned to him. That is just not an option that it would go any other way. Community, we are community. The students are community. We are a grander community with the parents. And it, it, it goes to all levels. Um, courage, the kids are expected to understand that it's a little uncomfortable sometimes to forge new paths and to be a little brave in their learning. It might be uncomfortable, but it's, it's all about being brave. Respect is all about um, peer to peer, teacher to student, student to teacher. It's, it's multi-level and it goes back and forth. It's very reciprocal. And scholarship is all about becoming a lifelong learner, about really enjoying learning and loving learning. Speaking of community, one of your alumni is here giving back to the community at Sage Ridge. Yep, absolutely. Helena is with us. She's a junior at UPenn. She's a recent graduate, and she's here working with the theater kids. Um, can't wait for you to meet her, and then we'd love for you to meet our other faculty and, and see some of the work they're doing. Great, let's do that. This is Helena Vanage, an alumni from the Sage Ridge School. What brings you back to Sage Ridge? Honestly, I, I would do anything to give back to the school that put me where I am today. I've been blessed with so many incredible opportunities, including a Fulbright Award to go study at Shakespeare's Globe in London. Sage Ridge was truly one of the most defining institutions of my young adult life and childhood. Without Sage Ridge, I can confidently say that I would not be where I am today. This is Michelle Crane, Director of Theater here at Sage Ridge School. I understand you have an award-winning theater department here. We absolutely do have an award-winning theater department. We've had several students make it to the international level, which is the highest level, which this is a title that I plan on keeping for as long as I am here. In fact, we're rehearsing right now. Why don't we take a look? <laughs> Let's do that.
This class, what we're doing over the course of the two weeks with this workshop is we're bringing the story of Maleficent to life for the kids. So they are taking a look at the different characters, they are creating headpieces and staffs and different um, props, if you will, that will bring these characters to life. And the stage that they're in right now is they're designing the makeup for their characters. What we'll be doing in the end is we'll be taking their accessories that they made, their headpieces and their staffs, we'll be taking their theatrical makeup, we'll be costuming them, and we'll be going out on location to shoot pictures where they actually transform themselves into characters that they've created out of the theme of Maleficent into their own kind of imagination. Literature and art brought mm -hmm. together, brought to life, yes. making learning extremely fun. Yes, hopefully so. This is Jocelyn Morrow, the music teacher at Sage Ridge School. Parents are going to be happy to know Sage Ridge has a music program. What kind of music program do you have here? Well, it's a veritable cornucopia of uh, delights for the musician. Um, I'm very passionate about music education and my philosophy is ability development. Uh, I'm not really interested in them performing for a product. I'm interested in teaching them how to learn. Uh, I like to think of myself as a flashlight and I show them around the world of music. We have lots and lots of instruments here. Uh, for the first time in the history of school, I have uh, built a program on instrumental ensembles with a uh, steel drum band and a jazz band in the upper school, and the first time ever, a ukulele ensemble. How can you not smile when you see or hear a ukulele? We tour around school, they, they call it going on tour, and we'll get a song together and take it up to the office and show the principal, and, Sometimes we go into the classroom if they're not busy and do a little song. You have a plethora of sports programs here at Sage Ridge. We do. We have both competitive sports and then we have our PE program. So in our competitive sports, we have everything from cross country to skiing to swimming to golf to volleyball. In our PE programs, the kids learn lacrosse, cricket, fencing, all kinds of fun sports in addition to basketball. This is Michelle Galavan Wallace, science teacher. What kind of project are we working on today? Um, the students are creating and designing squid out of balloons and streamers that will kind of ride along a string um, to just show how squid move in the ocean. We're studying giants of the sea, so things like um, giant squid, the kraken, uh, whales, sharks, and prehistoric beasts as part of our mini session. And so this is just a fun hands-on activity um, to try to model some of the adaptations of the creatures. Applied learning. Exactly. I'm fascinated by your bachelor's degree. Okay. My degree is in zoology from the University of New Hampshire. Um, so I've always loved animal life. So one of the reasons I chose to do Giants of the Sea is my love of um, adaptations of animals, especially the big ones. Um, I spent seven summers whale watching and so I tie my love of the ocean and animals into this class. And so, you bring that to the students here Exactly, at Sage right, right, trying to bring the excitement of animals and how they're adapted and evolve and all the amazing um, facts and myths about creatures. So that's why I do this. This is Mr. Zahn, the history teacher at Sage Ridge School, but we're building rockets today. How does that tie to history? As a history teacher, I am passionate also about space and understanding our place in the universe so the first week of this mini session, we spent learning about our universe, our solar system, and reading many scientists and authors, and learning about where we all fit in to um, our solar system, our universe, and why we're here. And then a really great piece of this is the exploration side. And in middle school, 
Uh, you know, our, our rocketry funding is limited, but we are here building model rockets that we will all be launching next week together. This is just one of the many pieces to our understanding our place in the universe class. I think it's also a lesson in how history can be made fun. Absolutely. This is Dr. Von Ach in the physical computing class. Looks yeah. like some cool things going on here. What are we doing? Oh, it's really cool because um, what they're working on today is a digital pinball machine. That um, they're they're taking an old TV screen, kind of recycling that, yeah. right? Wow. Um, integrating it with some hardware, some buttons, and and other things. They're designing a release for it that'll actually give it an analog signal and get translated. And then they're going to run a pinball machine simulation using that. So we've got the guys building the box, doing some software coding, working on the on the computer that runs the whole thing right there. Really intrigued into what this is. Yeah, well, that's that's um, the robotics team's competitive robot. They participate in something called the First Tech Challenge, which is an, uh, actually an international um, robotics competition that takes place um, all across the United States, Canada, Mexico, China, um, Europe. And we have teams that compete first at a regional level, then at things like a state or a provincial level. Um, so we're, gonna, we're competing here now. We'll go to Las Vegas to compete. And then if they, if, if, if they get somewhere with their design, right, and actually do really, really well, there's a super regional and then a, a basically an international competition. So this is a robot designed yeah. to project this ball into those hoops. Into those hoops, exactly. And right. it's a matter of how many you can make. It's a matter of, yep, they get as many points as they can get by getting balls in. So, so it's a real engineering project. We're with Ms. Tebow in the mixed media art class with a great project. Tell me what's going on here. So mixed media in general is the idea that different mediums, which traditionally have been very separate, like painting or you know the use of inks or drawing, um, are just brought together in a really exploratory manner. So the students are introduced to just kind of what mediums can be combined together. So they're using inks here, they're using acrylic paint, they're using stamps, and they're using collage mostly. So they get to do a lot of different things. I mean, we have some carving here where they're carving into the acrylic paints. Um, they're using a lot of collage as pattern in the background. Um, they're using a combination of translucency and opaqueness to kind of pop their work um, as they're going. So we talk about that as we're going along, but kind of combining it in a really different way. Very free spirited, mm -hmm. free thinking way. <laughs> yeah, it's very exploratory. It's really fun to see what the kids come up with. They come up with things that I wouldn't even, you know, think of. Today somebody was mixing glue in with the paint, um, which you can totally do. So, you know, they can just kind of go for it, which is really fun. Courtney Keeley teaching a Harry Potter mini session. Mm -hmm. That almost feels like fun other than learning. It is. It is learning disguised as fun. And so um, our goal here is to explore the hero's journey through Harry Potter and how Harry Potter follows this societal norm that we see in literature throughout history as a hero, all the different things he has to go through to become a hero. Um, in addition to that, we are getting crafty. We're making some wands. We are. Uh, we made some spell books because I'm the Latin teacher. I like to sneak a little Latin in when I can. Um, and so we did a little bit of spell writing to practice some Latin and learn about how we can create something from an ancient language. Learning made fun. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a class I want to take. Well, I hope so. I hope that they are all having a great time and that's the goal of the class. I can't be the only parent that wishes when they were going to school they got to go here at Sage Ridge. No, I mean, when my kids were here, I felt exactly the same way. I wish I could have been a part of it. Um, I think it's part of that educating the whole child that makes it such a rich experience between our mini sessions which you just experienced some of those classes when we come back from holiday break um, the kids go into these two-week workshops it's phenomenal what I loved about those workshops is that it didn't just have fun involved but it was fun on an education level that this was real life application. Absolutely. We're always looking for a way to bring those learning skill sets, those that critical thinking, the analytical, the observation, the curiosity, bring those in and weave them into whatever it is that they're learning at any specific time. So things, not just our regular curriculum, but like the international trip, the mini sessions, the outdoor education trips where the kids go out to Yosemite or Marin Headlands and they study water and what's living in the water, all those things combine to create this educational experience that really um, is looking to, to just 
enrich the entire child, educate the entire child, the whole child. The level of commitment that your staff has to the education process, very impressive, but I just have never seen a group of people so committed to the whole process. So it does trickle down from the top and that starts with our head of school, Norm Cole. I'd love for you to meet him right now. I can't wait to meet All him. Right, awesome. Mitch, I'd like to introduce you to our head of school, Norm Cole. Nice to meet you. Mitch. Pleasure to meet you, Norm. Thanks so much. I am overwhelmed with how incredible this school is. You must be tremendously proud. I am tremendously proud. It's a very, very special school. Uh, you know, nationally, there's all kinds of worry about where the kids are being asked to perform at high standards. At this school, that's beyond question. The, the, uh, the curriculum is very, very impressive. Uh, but what I find every bit as impressive is the human quality, the, the interactions between the kids and the faculty. The people who work here with the kids are a very special group. Uh, they love their disciplines, of course, that goes without saying, but they are passionate about reaching deep inside every student and finding that gift. And the school is committed to finding uh, the strengths in every student, not just the high performers. So the, the other thing that makes me so, so pleased about this place is that it's got a wonderful, loving atmosphere. Um, it's a serious school that doesn't take itself seriously. The kids who go here, I think, have a, just a wonderful time. And I'm forever hearing from parents uh, that the kids wish they were actually more school. I don't think that's the majority opinion, <laughs> but there's enough kids who feel that way to make me, uh, to make me really uh, love what I see going on every day in the classes, there's just a joy that you don't find in many schools. Well, that starts from the top, and I can feel it even from you. Aren't you kind? That is the exact sensation that I have, the experience that I've had being here today, and thank you so much for allowing us to come Oh, in. It's, been a, it's been great fun to watch you work. Thanks. Thank you. This is our upper school lunch area, so they have their own sort of little cafe, their own little student snack bar that they run and support their own government events. So that's pretty cool. There's some common misconceptions about Sage Ridge, so let's dispel them now. Okay, I would love to. So first off, we're a nonprofit. People forget that about us, but we are completely funded by our tuition and by donors contributing to what we call our Opportunity Fund, which provides scholarships. So 30% of our student body is on some form of scholarship. There's another common misconception that only whiz kids and rich kids can come here. Neither is true. The only common thread in our student body is that the kids have a love of learning. A love for learning? How do you quantify that? I mean, as a parent, sometimes that's even hard to tell if your kid has a love for learning. It is, and sometimes you can't tell that until they get in the right environment and are supported in a way that allows that to blossom. We have a couple things that we um, have parents do with their children to figure out if Sage is a good fit. They can come and take a tour. They can shadow for a day where the child will actually follow another student through his classes or her classes to figure out if it feels right. And a lot of times, that's the key where they just figure out, oh my gosh, this is an amazing place and I'm so excited to be in these classes. I understand you have a couple of parents that are willing to share their experience with us. We do. We've got a couple different parents that are, are going to let you know what it's been like for them. Great. Let's go meet them. Okay. This is Robert Malmrose, a parent of a student here at Sage Ridge. First of all, thank you so much for being willing to share your experience with us. You're welcome. I'm glad to share. You have a child enrolled currently at Sage Ridge. Tell us how that whole process started. We came up and we met with the admissions counselor and one of the things that they told me is they're looking for students that have a love of learning and that was their their main criteria for the type of students they want to attend Sage. And it, it took me back for a minute and I had to really think, does my son love to learn? Um, is his favorite class before was recess. Then I understand you went to an open house here. We did. In fact, the open house was very impressive because it was led by the students. So we first went to the, my son was going to be enrolling in fifth grade, and we walked up to the fifth grade table, and there was several fifth grade students 
who not only were able to answer my son's questions, but they were able to answer my questions as well. And so from there, we went and we looked at the sixth grade and seventh and some of the upper um, grade classes and talked with them to find out what the education experience would be like throughout um, my son's stay here at Sage Ridge. And it was just very impressive with how articulate the kids were and how confident they were in talking to both my son as well as to me. Tell me about the shadow day experience. Sure. So for the shadow day, my son came up and um, joined the fifth grade class. He was in fourth grade and he had a, a shadow buddy and attended all the classes. He got to go to the town hall, town hall meeting. And um, by the end of the day, he came home so excited. And his first words were, Dad, this is where I want to go to school. When you started, you were concerned about your son being a good fit. How do you feel now? Originally, I was concerned about him being a good fit. Um, almost immediately, three weeks into school, that concern had completely dissipated, and now he is thriving in this environment. In fact, recently we had a snow day, and I went to wake him up and say, hey, we've got a snow day. And he woke up and he was excited, but he had mixed feelings about it. And he said, well, Dad, you know, snow day's great, but I'm really going to miss school. We're in the middle of a mini session, and I really want to go. So my son loves the school. He loves attending school. and. Um, Loves learning now. He loves learning now. In fact, when we do homework, um, it's not a matter of getting homework done as fast as we can so we can go play. He takes the homework and then he wants to learn more about the subjects. So we'll go out to Google, we'll go to reference books, and we'll expand upon the subjects he's actually learning because he, he wants his knowledge to go deeper than just what's, what is required. So my son loves to learn, which I'm astonished by and completely thrilled by at the same time. This is Erin Mulvaney. You have several students here at Sage Ridge School. I do. I have three children, two boys and a girl, uh, ages are in the fourth and the sixth and the eighth grade. I understand that they're individuals and this environment has been very good for that. Uh, that's true. I think um, we had waited several years to come to Sage. It had been a school we'd heard so much about and had been very excited about, uh, in particular for our oldest son, who was very academically strong, uh, very self-motivated, hardworking, so we knew it would be a great fit. Um, and when he came to the school, it, it didn't surprise us, but it did how much he blossomed. But what was a bigger surprise was my two other children, um, who are great kids, but different. Each one of them are so different, different strengths, different challenges. Um, and I wasn't so sure that they would have the same success. And we were worried because we wanted them to have the same experience as our older son. Um, but what we found three times consecutively um, with different teachers and in different uh, classrooms with different children, that they all found success. And that was um, an incredible um, realization that we weren't necessarily expecting. Other parents probably want to understand how that happened. Why did all three different unique individuals succeed in this environment? It's a really good question, and I'm not sure I know the, the real answer, but I know that there is a, there's a synergy here, and I don't know all the aspects that go into it, but I do know that ultimately each child felt so supported, felt so seen, and I think no matter what strengths or challenges they came to the school with, Whatever their strengths were, were supported and pushed, but their challenges were also seen and recognized and supported. And I think ultimately they just felt seen, in which case um, I think they were set up to succeed. I am not sure who's going to be more excited about coming here, the kids who get to go to school here or the parents who get to have their kids come here. We hear that a lot and we're so excited to have all of them here with us. You have an event coming up where they can both come down and learn more about getting enrolled at Sage Ridge. Absolutely. On February 1st and March 1st, both of those are Wednesdays at 530, we are having open houses and the parents can come with their students and meet some of the faculty, learn about the curriculum, get a tour of the school. It's just a great way to meet us and get to know what we're about. For those who have already decided they want to enroll their children at Sage Ridge School, how would they go about doing that? Well, they can either give us a call at 775-852-6222 and talk to our Director of Admissions, or they can visit our website at www.sageridge.org and get lots of details there. Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you so much for being here. We've enjoyed it. 
For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from the 